Yeah, hello and welcome to this quick tutorial on using emissive lights to create realistic lighting using Lumen and Unreal Engine 5.2 and onward. This is a really good method for creating large area of effect lights that are very performant, but maybe not as good as uh, say point lights in smaller areas. So I've got a two test scenes around, so let's go and take a look at the first one. So as I was mentioning earlier, point lights are better for indoor lighting scenarios or areas where you need hard shadows. The Lumen emissives cannot do hard shadows. And so this is one area where the point lights do do a bit better. But of course they do come with a caveat is that they generally tend to create these like sort of hot spots, which I generally don't like for when I'm trying to light certain areas. And that's why I do definitely prefer the emissive for that. So in this uh, example, we've got just three lights in a small area. And immediately one of the problems that we will start seeing is that that does tend to start hurting performance. Add just a few more lights in a small area and you immediately start getting into the white. And it is very hurtful as a lighting artist for that. And so that's where these Lumen emissives come in. And see, so you've got three large Lumen emissives set up just as these orbs. One of the cool things is you can do is you can uh, hide them so that they don't appear in the player's view. And if we go and look here at light complexity, we'll see that they are almost uh, non-existent. So let's just go and delete these guys from interfering. So you'll see that they are almost non-existent. So they don't take up any light complexity and give you large area of effect lights. Uh, that are very soft, but you'll start seeing some little issues with the little bit of flickering and uh, no hard shadows uh, and just sort of, it doesn't really seem, you don't really see where the light is coming from. So that can be solved with a couple of uh, quick fixes. So one of the things you can do is you can mix and match these two. So we've got some point lights here and some of the emissive lights, but the point lights, they're attenuation radius has been turned way down. So they're not affecting anything other than just creating sort of the shadows that they need to create and nothing more. And the effect of that is that you get a very, very performant area of effect light that, and it still looks really good. So yeah, so just mixing and matching these uh, methods can create some really cool effects. And you can even apply this material to uh, some other models. So just another example over here, you can see I've got this uh, emissive box here. You can see that it costs a softer shadow. And one of the cool things about it is that it doesn't need to be rendered for us to get the light. So you can see that even though it's not on screen, it's still costing its light rather far. You can use it for creating ambience by creating these uh, boxes. You can also just create sort of like these panels and I'll get into panels later. That's one of my favorite methods. Um, yeah, again, you can just apply them to models. One thing is that it is using the um, sort of, it's building a very low poly model. And one of the ways that it detects how much of this should be affecting the environment is the size. So at a certain point, uh, you're gonna start noticing that no matter how bright this light is, its area of influence is directly correlated to its size. So um, yeah, just another example over here. You can again go and see that no matter how many of these you have in an area, you're not gonna get any more complexity. So we can just go and really see, no matter how many you have, no added complexity. So very, very performant for creating large area lights. So like I said earlier, you can apply them directly to models. I've even got an extra panel in here just to showcase that. So we've got all of these guys creating their own light, lighting the scene and just looking very realistic, very nice and uh, sharp, I love it. So an example where I would use these is sort of in cities using the st street lamps. You can use the emissive material on the actual model itself, like I mentioned, but you'll see that again, this is not gonna be costing um, any light. I can just go and throw a little model up there and you can see that it's barely costing anything. You know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna go very far because of its size. So if you can imagine that the size of the model is directly correlated to like sort of it's a sphere that's being cast on it. So you can fix that by just using panels and these panels are absolutely fantastic. Use them like a set dresser on a movie set to create these sort of lights areas and you can start seeing it creating these really natural massive area of effect lights 
and they're absolutely beautiful. Whereas in the past, you know, I'd sort of use these uh, spotlights. But yeah, uh, again, having a bunch of these in a city, just having thousands of them can really hurt your performance. So yeah, there is the material. Uh, well, there is using emissive. So let's go through and uh, showcase the material. So I'm gonna grab just a little cube here. Okay, so let's take a look at the material. You'll see the material is very basic. It is just an intensity, a uh, temperature, a bit of math, and a color. And that's it. There's no settings here that you need to change at all, uh, at least in 5.2 by default. None of these need to be changed. So it's just all here and on the model itself. So let's go ahead and we're going to go to the model. Uh, why okay i've got a search there we go okay <laughs> okay so we're going to go and bring up our material our lumen emissive and you'll see by default it's black and that's because here we're using primitive data um so you can set those up in the material i just like to use these so that you can have the controls over here so we're going to go and add those controls i find that 30 is a decent starter point maybe just a little bit less here for this little demo there we go 10 and you know, uh, by default in 5.2, a lot of these settings are set on by default, but the effect dynamic lighting is where you'll see that the um, sort of larger area of influence is going to come from. So this indirect lighting is the big key one. So in old Unreal Engine versions, this might be turned off. So you're going to start by turning that on. Okay. Uh, one of the other things I like to do is I like to turn cast shutters off. It just helps with a bit of performance. Uh, especially when you've got them next to each other. And then we can go ahead and turn actor hidden in game on and you'll see that it'll disappear. But then we're just gonna turn effect indirect lighting while hidden back on. And there you go, you now have an invisible light. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So what's that all like? Hmm. That's also, again, why I like to sort of like use these on spheres or planes uh, instead of the cubes, just for those little reasons. So let's go through that again, right? So we're gonna go Lumen, gonna grab our emissive, go down to our settings, turn that on and hidden in game. And then we're gonna go effect while hidden. And there you go. Very, very cool. So just another example, I like to use these to throw lights into an indoor environment by just putting them at the entrances. And because they're hidden, they are not visible to the player, but then you get these beautiful sort of lights being cast indoors. And again, they are being cast all the way to the other side of the room. Lovely bounce lighting. And even though they aren't being rendered on camera, you're still getting their lighting effect from the indirect lighting. So there you have it. Uh, these, the material are posted down in the comment section below. So you can like go ahead and just, let's just finish this off with lighting the entire scene. <laughs> so yeah, very, very cool tool. Absolutely love it. Love how performant it is. It's a really good uh, tool to have in your kit. And I'll close off by just holding it here in case you just want to copy this just by looking at it. And that's it. So. Enjoy, and I'll see you next time.